Hello, intrepid viewers. Here is your jet-lagged sociologist. When I flew into Melbourne yesterday morning, early, you couldn't even see the city for the fog and the frost. It is so cold. I can't begin to describe how cold my hands are barely working. But here we are, and since we last spoke, lots of things have happened, not all of them good. But surprisingly, the evil alien cannon actually ruled against Trump in some small way, apart from trying to sabotage the entire case and doing very well at that. Um, we'll have a look at that issue. She didn't let his team have all their own way. And I was so shocked I had to read the article twice. Yeah. Meanwhile, a lot of you are asking about the debate. I don't think he'll turn up, do you? What do you really think? Um, I hope Biden keeps baiting him and saying, you know, just imagine the Yeti without a teleprompter and without an audience. I mean, the mind boggles, does it not? And we all know what happens when he goes off script, which is all the time. He keeps blaming the teleprompter, but... I think he's struggling to actually read the teleprompter. It's another issue altogether. But will he turn up? I mean, the narcissist needs people as oxygen and his own minders would be beside themselves trying to discourage him. It's been, let's just see, let's just ask. Will the Yeti actually turn up for the debate? Oh, I hope he does. I hope he does. So let's just have a quick look because I think this is a volatile situation. I think with the Gemini maniac, you know, half of him, yeah, I want the debate, I'll flatten Biden. The other part is the scared, inarticulate child. I don't think he knows what he wants to do. So let's have a look. Will he actually attend the debate? And you can't have a debate with one person, so it's either on or it's off. Okay, let's just look at the debate. Will he turn up? Oh, today he wants to. <laughs> Look, I think it's a strategic decision. Now, he hasn't got a strategic fibre, you know, underneath all that yeti tan. So he wants to because he's convinced, you know, he's a legend in his own lunchtime. He's convinced he's got something to say. Look at this. I think he's a bit frustrated that Truth Social continues to have an audience of 23 people is frustrated. He's all gung-ho. Bear in mind this reading is for now, the energy around now looking at the debate. He's gung-ho. He's defending from the hill. I'm quite surprised about all this, actually, I have to say. He is gung-ho. But... And I think this is the mind, the minders. Have they got a Yeti tranquilizer? I think they might have to bring it out because these cards are saying, yeah, yeah, I'll debate. They are actually talking about how they're going to do it. This is the card of strategy, right? Strategizing how are they going to handle him? I think some are thinking, how are we going to handle him leading into the debate? Because you can't coach him. I'm sure Biden's having intense coaching to get him up to speed with this um, because the two moderators are, you know, people who have real questions to ask and Joe is more than capable of answering them. He might not be scintillating, but he can answer them. 
But I think the other part of them is saying, how can we stop him? And I pulled another card, the high priestess. I think there's going to be a secret agenda, the people who matter in his world, to stop him from doing it. I think they're going to tell him it's on another night. Ah, oh, they could have all sorts of things up their sleeve. Car breakdown on the way to the debate. Sorry, Mr. Pre Ex President. You know, like there's something secret going on here. They're, they're quite determined he doesn't do this. Hmm. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Now, Biden, back in the real world, you know, actually trying to get policies through. Oh, the dog's woofing. It's probably a cat going past. Um, he's proposing to ban medical debt from your credit rating. Now, guys, I feel for you, the American health system, which is known as the worst health system in the first world, I mean, it's all right if you've got top coverage and you have resort care and good doctors and all of that. But a statistic here that shocked me was that two-thirds of people under 65 who have medical insurance are stressed by their medical debt. I mean, the rest of us can't get our head around this sort of stress that so many of you are under. I mean, so I think it's a very good thing to be proposing. So will he have any chance of getting it up? Probably not before the election with this Congress. But let's just talk about that for a moment. It would be a good innovation to take medical debt off your credit rating. It's like student debt, you know, you're paying it off for 30 years and 40 years and it's on your credit rating. It's, I don't know what to say. And this is why Americans should and must start looking at other countries and the way other countries do things. And some countries do it better. Some countries do it just as badly, but very few do it worse, you know? And the, the kicker, because I'm a health sociologist as a specialty, is Americans per capita pay more than Australians, Canadians, Italians, Germans, French, English for the, the health care you don't get. So it's not about the money. It's about how it's used. It's just an industry. So will this be popular? Let's ask that. Will this be popular, taking medical debt off the credit rating? Let's have a look. Mm. Okay, I think here, in terms of will it be popular, Yes, it will be because it will make a real difference to people's lives. So quite apart from the medical health issue, to have that financial stress and then to have it on your credit rating. So Nine of Pentacles, it would be popular, but it would be very hard to get through because Americans um, are very much enculturated into the individual idea. Everyone's an individual. And I'm sorry to break the news, you don't live in an economy, you live in a society. But people will fight for this. So it won't be popular because it wouldn't be popular in principle with people who can afford it. Why should I pay for someone else? It's that lack of collective thinking. Whereas for Australians, for example, wealthy Australians would say, I don't want to live in a society where other people can't get health care. They are prepared to pay um, their extra levy in tax so they don't have to live with that. It's, it's, it's not that we're a bastion of collectivism. We're not. But in healthcare, 
were pretty good. So this is people who would reject it, but it's sensible. It doesn't magically take away the debt. It's only making life more bearable. And again, we have the high priestess, but in a, a different sort of interpretation here. Um, I think this will be more popular with women. And as we know, the women's vote on everything going forward is going to be absolutely essential. Someone sent me a meme, which I loved, and it said something. Let me think if I can get the wording. Um, oh, every day there'll be a Republican woman having a pregnancy test and deciding she's a Democrat. You know, you get it. Yeah. Now let's look at Barney. So things were looking pretty gruesome in the sense that it's being appealed that she sh can even still run the case. And we all went, oh. But she has made an appeal against that appeal. Okay. And her essential argument is the presiding judge, McAfee, said although their affair doesn't look good, he was satisfied that either she withdrew at that stage or Wade, whoever his name was, the swain, should go off the case, and he did. And that was enough for the judge. So she's arguing this is overkill, which, of course, it is. But this is very important because they don't have to convince you and me. They have to convince these progressively suspect appeals courts. So will Farney's appeal be successful and put this nonsense to bed or not? Will it be successful? Oh, good luck, Farney. Good luck, Farney. Because I was at the stage last week of thinking, really, maybe she should pull herself off the case and let another judge get uh, another prosecutor get up to speed just to push the case forward. But let's have a look. Will her appeal be successful? Is there any justice in the world? Barney's appeal against the appeal. Barney's appeal. No. Oh! Okay. Well, it won't be straightforward, but I'm tentatively optimistic. Celebrating. That was the first card night you heard me whoopee with delight. But that was followed by the Five of Cups. So in a way, if you think of this figure as funny, she's had all these setbacks, but two are still standing. Then there's the very lovely temperance card, which suggests moderation and all those things that are sensible. It would be a sensible ruling to just bat it back to the judge. That would take her to a safer place where she could proceed. Of course, the Republicans are going to jump up and down and go, you know, weaponizing the justice system and all the usual palaver, but outcome, Ten of Cups, good. Ten of Cups, good. Wouldn't that be a breath of fresh air? Some good news. Right. Wow. Good. Now, while I'm shuffling, let's double back to Hunter Biden for a minute. When I read on him in the last video, his cards were better than I expected for sentencing. Right Now, remember he had the deal. He pled guilty, had a plea deal in place, and then that fell over. Then I think his legal team said plead not guilty. I don't get that. I don't get that. He should have listened to his auntie instead of the defence team. But it is a first offence. It is a nonviolent crime. He had the gun for 11 days and it didn't leave a locked box. It's a victimless crime, la, 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 la. It should be all right. The only thing he'll get into trouble for 
um, apart from actually lying on the form, is pleading not guilty. He'll get more because he pled not guilty than if he'd pled guilty. But in the big picture, not only do I think it'll be okay, I think he'll be another Michael Cohen. He'll, he has written a book already that apparently is quite honest and transparent and worthy. I think he will become a spokesman for addictions and the trouble it causes you and everyone in your sphere. I think it'll be a redemption story. So don't worry. I think it'll be okay. Now, um, Bannon. I'm going to move to my evil cards for Bannon. He's whining and whinging and snarling and carrying on. He's far too important to go to jail is his basic argument. Don't you love that? The Yeti needs me. Mm. Such a foul creature. So... He is trying to get out of jail. Let's see how that goes. For him, I'm using the Deviant Moon deck. Excuse me. They're great for horrible people. Love these cards. Bannon. Will he still have to go to jail on the 1st of July? Bannon. Let's check in. Well, who's celebration? Hmm. The first card, the Four of Swords, which you'll be familiar with in other decks, is that figure lying down with the swords pointing on. This is a a jail card for sure. The High Priestess has turned up again. She's our card du jour, but as you can see from this deck, he's trying everything. But I don't think it will be successful. When I said who's celebrating, is it Bannon team or is it team us? I think it's team us. Let's hope. And his outcome card was the Knight of Wands, where I think he will be galloping off to the overdue and well-deserved incarceration. It's a mere four months, which is easy for any of us to say when we're talking about someone else going to jail. Um, and he is a genuine tough guy. He's an ex-Navy SEAL. It's not that he'll probably get a bit of a cult following himself in jail. You know, I hope they put him in a segregated wing so he can't spew his nonsense. Now, back to Aileen Cannon. Now, you know what she's like. She gets up in the morning going, how can I screw over the nation um, how can I make Jack Smith's life a misery? How can I earn my corrupt income? And quite surprisingly, she's made a decision that his support cast, that's Walt Naura, Nauta and the other guy, Carlos de Olivia or something his name is, that they can't wriggle out of it basically. This was quite surprising. Everyone was shocked. So let's have a look. In other good news, Alex Jones has been ordered to liquidate his assets to pay the parents and teachers involved with Sandy Hook. Not a minute too soon. That was, what, 12 years ago or something? He's been allowed to run amok and acquire millions in that time while those families will suffer forever, you know. Okay. Get back to it. Focus, Lena. What are we doing? Okay. Now, what's our actual question about? Let's, let's not worry about Aileen so much. Let's see how Jack Smith's feeling 
he's on the brink or has already submitted his critical documents of her last 57 appalling decisions. Let's see how he's traveling. Is he feeling ground down now? Does he feel unsupported or is he okay? Let's look in at Jack Smith. Let's look in at Jack Smith. Oh. The Emperor. Oh. Wow. Wow. Okay. This is interesting. Normally, the Jack Smith turns up for me as the magician and Trump is the emperor. Now, at first, when this card came up just now, I thought, oh, maybe in this context, Jack Smith is the emperor, but when I look at the rest of the cards, no, I think this is the Yeti. Jack Smith, I think, has some inside knowledge. Hmm. And I think he can see that the Trump Tower is crashing of its own accord. He's, uh, I think this is, this can be read both ways. I think there's part of Jack Smith that is upset with this Nine of Swords. But more importantly, he understands that because of all these things, and he knows things we don't, that with this crashing tower, he understands that the legal team is quietly in despair because the nightmare for any lawyer is a client who does not listen to you and lets you do your thing and they are in despair. I think Jack Smith himself has a very strong relationship. I presume this is with his wife. Um, and my mumbling about does he feel supported or not by the justice system, I think he's worried by it, but he does actually see where it is going and that he's hopeful that things going forward will get better from here for this case. And that recent ruling I was just talking about has given him a bit of hope. He has put out some legal feelers, some heavyweight legal feelers, and he's waiting for his ships to come in. In other words, even though he would have a mountain of witnesses, a mountain of documents, this is a cut and dried case. The aspect of other people at Trump's behest moving the documents, I think there's more to it, possibly more video evidence of it. So providing it can come to a jury at all, I think he's still confident in the ultimate outcome. Bless him for that. Okay, so let me pull some cards for you guys. And what I want to say here is where are we mid-June? July, August, September, October, that we're still, we're nudging five months till the actual election. This is a time to really get your strategies in place for coping with the madness. So, and you guys have been sending great suggestions in the comments. Good on you. Okay. So some cards for the viewers. Okay. Oh, sorry, I didn't bring you down. Okay. The first one was three of pentacles, followed by the ten of pentacles, followed by the five of swords, then the six of swords. Okay. Really, really important working together. The three of pentacles is about working together. Now, I know I harp on about this. But 
people feel really isolated in their pain and their anxiety. And I don't think it's an overstatement, the PTSD of the Yeti years, you know. But you're not alone. You are not alone. Communicate with others. This reinforces this, this Ten of Pentacles. This is about different generations working together. And we tend to, in capitalist societies, mix young people only with young people, middle-aged people with middle-aged, older people only with older people. Mix it up. Mix it up. Also, animals are massively beneficial for our souls and our well-being. Really important. The Five of Swords, there's going to be more to deal with. That's not mysterious. It's a five. I was just saying five months, five months more of this stuff. But trust on the other side, even though the election result will inevitably be disputed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, on the other side of that look, moving from the choppy waters to the calmer sea. And this is literal and figurative. So hopefully next year, certainly as the year evolves, 2025 karma sees, certainly won't be January and February. But this is also in terms of your life. To find ways to deal with the stress and the frustrations and have your calm spot. What is your calm place? What makes you feel better? It might literally be water. Do you live near the ocean, a river or a lake? Do you perhaps need to go there a bit more often than you have been? You know, you're paddling your own canoe here. You know, so make sure it's a good one, but I've got one more tip. It's really, really important. If you can get one person extra to vote who might not otherwise, without a bit of one-on-one -on -one encouragement, you double your vote. So go for it. And don't forget, everything is contagious. Depression is contagious. Joy is contagious. So be part of the joy. Put some nice vibes out there. Okay, guys, take care and I'll see you soon. Let me know what you think in the comments. Bye for now. Ciao.